name is Mary Fox. Welcome to Soccer Rap USA. And my name is Jenna. We have an exciting new show for you, Soccer Rap USA. We bring the hottest soccer action. Let's kick it off with the most recent CONCACAF Gold Cup tournament in sunny California. Ooh la la. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Okay, let's go to the field with John Stavros and check out the action. Soccer Rap USA. We're at the qualification match between Brazil and the United States at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Captain Balbo for the US, Captain Narcisio for the Brazilian team. Ball is at the corner, center, saved by Keller, one of the many saves he had to make during uh, this game. Brazilian controlling, out to Caio on the wing. Back to the center. Narcissio, shot, post. That was the fifth. And here you go, an opportunity missed by the United States. That was Wegeli. Shot by a Brazilian defender. Deflected again. This part of the game was totally controlled by the Brazilian national team. This is also the Brazilian under-23 team, which is the Olympic team that we'll be seeing this summer. Shot by Kobe, deflected by Brazilian defender. We're at the press box right now where the news of the first half are uh, passed around. Photographer is bringing up the disc. The disc goes straight to the computer, UPI, sends it out then with the information to the newspapers of the world. <laughs> Electronic media is the way to go, and this is the way things are done nowadays. Second half, again, Brazilians dominating. Another shot. And here's the goal. By Savio, deflected by Balboa. Eighth consecutive victory over the United States. Brazilians are celebrating. Well, I feel it was a, an unfortunate way to lose the game considering how well we played during the course of the match. I felt we, uh, at the very least, played equal, if not better, than Brazil at times. I think we controlled the tempo of the game. We created opportunities. Brazil respected our abilities. But against teams like this, you must finish the chances that you get, and this is what we must improve upon. Brazil did a good job of defending against us, defending in numbers, but I also thought that we did a wonderful job of controlling midfield, controlling the tempo in the second half especially. And I'm very proud of our players, the way they played extremely proud and I think um, every single time we've played this team we've played better and I think we've demonstrated on the field today we didn't play conservative soccer we didn't play to defend we played to attack and we played to win and I think that was very obvious in the game today so it's unfortunate on the own goal but these things happen in soccer and we must find ways to prevent them in the future, and we must find ways to create even more opportunities and finish the chances that we get. Here you are, inside the uh, crazy army of uh, Sam's army. These are the real patriotic American crazy fans, and we're in the heart of it. This is Soccer Rap USA with your host, John Stavros. We bring it to you straight, smack in the face. You must be a USA fan, naturally, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> who, who, designed, the who designed the hat? Yeah. Uh, well, let's see the golfer. 
I got it up the coast in Central California. I don't know how I found it. It was in a used hat store. So. It's, it's one of the best hats that we've seen in a long time, you know? It stands out. In fact, we came all the way from the other side to just, like, film your hat. So, what's your name? Jeff Parker. I wish I could make you one, but I didn't make it. I've got a pattern maker back in New York. We'll knock it off. Anyway, enjoy the game. And where are you from? I'm from San Luis Obispo, California. Good. Cheer on, man. Thank you. Tomorrow we're going to be at the Combine all day, so stay with us, all right? Don't leave. Don't change that dial. Here we are, final game of the Gold Cup, Brazil versus Mexico. Six hours of constant rain, the field conditions, horrible. Mexico dominating, shot on goal, saved by the Brazilian Dita. Mexican fans going crazy, 88,000 of them and 40,000 outside the Coliseum. Steve Sampson, the coach of the U.S. team. The few Brazilian fans had a great day. But it didn't last. As you can see, the water was not in their favor. There's Campos with the ball. Brazilian squad was totally stopped by the Mexicans as they could not play their give and touch game. A few times they attempted, the ball would slip away. We're at the final where Zagallo is arguing with FIFA officials. There was something like 30 fouls in direct shot reflected off a Brazilian defender. This is John Stavis with uh, you in uh, the Coliseum and naturally we're at uh, halftime with the score being 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, Brazil and Mexico are playing a very defensive and a very strong game. So what we're going to do is look at the, at the score where the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. You're going to look at the crowd here which is basically a sold out crowd. You can see them going crazy. We have a sold out Coliseum. Uh, the teams are still not at, at halftime. In the background you have Los Angeles, as you can see Los Angeles in the background, it's really beautiful. You look at the pink sky above, and right now we are going to get ready for the second half. The Brazilian national team has just entered. Uh, as we can see the field conditions are pretty horrible. Score is still 0-0. At the earlier game, uh, the United States beat Guatemala 3-0. Goals coming in from uh, uh, Juanalda, Tab Ramos, and also Jeff Agus. At this moment, the score is still 0-0, and uh, it's going to be a, a very, very exciting second half. And all we have to do is stay in touch with reality and the ball so don't switch your dial stay with us all right and there they go they're warming up get ready for the second half okay here we are 88,000 people the Mexicans are totally dominating this game shot by Garcia and the score is 1-0 again the Brazilians have no way to dominate as they don't know how to play under these bad conditions. Mexicans again, shot on goal, saved by Dita. There's an additional 30,000 fans outside the stadium that couldn't get in. Another cross. Look how back the defenders of Brazil. Here comes the second goal, and Mexico now is up two. The score came for the goal came from Blanco, 2-0. No way the Brazilians can come back. And the crowd is going crazy. Celebration begins. Los Angeles is burning right now.
Then will be presented by Eduardo De Luca, General Secretary of Comebol, to the National Team of Brazil. El primer trofeo es el de Juego Limpio, será hecho por el señor Eduardo De Luca, Secretario General de Comebol, para la Selección Nacional de Brasil. The next award is the most valuable player in the tournament award. It will also be presented by Eduardo De Luca, General Secretary of Comebol, and is given to Mexico's number six, Raúl Rodrigo Lara. The MVP of the game, Luis Garcia. Here we are. It was a great day for the Mexican fans and Mexican players as they defeated the Olympic team of Brazil. Welcome back to Soccer Wrap. <laughs> wow, that was hot stuff. Mm-hmm. And now we bring to you Major League Soccer news from California. And New York City. Soccer Wrap USA. Empress Philomena and the Imperial Court of New York are proud to announce the 10th anniversary of Night of a Thousand Gowns. Celebrating the successful reign of Empress Philomena, Empress of Faith, Hope, and Cartier, and the coronation of the Imperial Crown Princess Royal Ran D and the Imperial Crown Prince Stephen. This year's beneficiaries are Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, In the Life, and Pet Owners with AIDS Arc Resource Service. Soccer Rap USA. But I think MLS is going to be a place where you see kids bringing the moms and dads to the game and explaining to them about a corner kick and, and a free throw. Because they don't know. The parents haven't grown up on it, but the kids have. And that's one of the reasons why I think MLS is, is going to succeed. The 1994 World Cup has been universally claimed as the greatest in history. The fortunes of soccer in the United States at all levels have been soaring and booming. Girls, boys, men, women, recreational, competitive, high school, college, division two and three, and indoor professional. And now comes the time for the cherry on the icing on the cake. The successful launch of Major League Soccer. For the past 15 months, we have been working mostly behind the scenes to create a foundation for Major League Soccer eventually to take its place as the fifth major professional team sport in the United States. 